We're here in historic Greenfield, Indiana, the birthplace of poet James Whitcomb Riley, trying to talk to the elusive film historian Eric Grayson, who's about to embark on a new project to restore Little Orphan Annie. Oh, there he is! There he is! Oh, oh, sir, why don't you talk to us? Please! I, I don't want to talk to you. Well, why not? I, I, why don't you just do it? Well, I am a professional narrator. Okay, great. So why do we want to restore this little orphaned Annie? Huh, no, no, no. That has nothing to do with it. It has nothing to do with the comic strip. Now, it's based on a classic poem by Indiana's most famous poet. You know, this guy, James Whitcomb Riley. It's the only movie he ever appeared in. Now, the star is Colleen Moore, who went on to become a huge silent film star. You may know her best from her dollhouse, known as the Fairy Castle, on display at the Museum of Science and Industry in Chicago. It's huge! It takes you a long time just to walk around it. This is Colleen herself in her later years inside the Fairy Castle. I told you it was big. Look at the difference between what's available on video and the prints we have from the Library of Congress. Wow! Impressive. So why is this going to cost so much? Because the surviving materials are really in bad shape. Not only are they out of sequence, each print in a different order, but there are splices and deterioration to consider. This is what's left of an original nitrate print that was rotting on the bench. It was almost completely gone. And as you can see, it's really not good enough to use at all. But we can get some good ideas of what the original tints looked like. Now these 16mm prints are partly tinted, but they're on brittle diacetate print stock. There's a lot of damage in them, particularly at the start and end of reels. Now watch this typical sequence as the splices mount up. They can be replaced from the other print, but it will take a lot of work. Now this shot is only 18 seconds long, but there's almost a whole second missing in it. It's the best one of the three prints. The other print can be rescaled and graded, but it's going to take a lot of time and effort to get it right. And this is 18 seconds out of about 60 minutes. But you see how the process works here. Now, when we're finished with this, the film will end up at the Library of Congress for long-term storage. And for our stretch goal, we'd like to hire silent film accompanist Ben Modell to record a score for the DVD and Blu-ray. For an extra stretch goal, we will include a commentary and research materials from Jeff Cadori. And I'd like to thank you for helping to save this film that's been sitting around in rusty cans for 90 years.